Okay, so as we talked about today, day, tw day 24 of the profit challenge, and today we're gonna get into what we call first time versus repeat customers. I called this yesterday new versus returning, but thought that first time versus repeat customers would be able to give us a little bit more of a uh, balance here as well. So thanks for watching. Now today, what we've got, uh, just to recap really quick, is we've got the profit, the customer margin tree, sorry. Sorry, I'm having a little technical difficulties. My screen share not working, there we go. So today what we're, we're getting into is we're getting into the right, hand si the right hand side here of the customer margin tree. Yesterday we looked at the revenue per customer side of the equation and we talked a bit more about how you can increase your lifetime value for your customers. Now today what we're talking a bit more about is the right side of the equation we're gonna talk about customers. And so with customers, we're gonna to talk today about first time versus repeat customers. You'll notice as well that I've updated this a little bit more to kind of take up maybe some of the confusion that had been in there in the past around sort of the cross sections. And you'll notice that we've got now earned versus paid below each of our first time and as well as our repeat customers. Because in some cases, most of the time you wanna look for earned customers in both scenarios, but there is a scenario in a case where you may need to have to pay for customers that are repeat customers. And we'll talk a little bit more about that tomorrow when we talk about earned versus paid customers. But today, we're gonna to dial in a little bit closer in on the first time versus repeat customers. And take it a little bit step further, if we populate this with some of our numbers around new for first time versus repeat customers, let's say for example, we've got a scenario here where we've got 10,000 customers at the top line, but then let's say it's split 40, 60. So we got 40% of those people are first time customers and 60% of those would be repeat customers or 6,000. This would be a very sort of, I would say, growing business or scaling business where you've got more repeat customers coming in the door than what you've got for maybe first time customers. But we'll look at a few other scenarios if you're just starting out, what that could mean and what that could look like, as well as if you're still growing and you're still getting more first time versus repeat customers versus what this scaling option looks like. Now, if we break that down a little bit further in terms of the earned versus paid, what you're typically gonna find is on a first time customer basis, you're most likely gonna be skewed a little bit higher towards the paid side of the equation, simply because you're probably trying to pay to get those customers in the door in the first place, or perhaps you're using advertising spend that is attracting more new customers for you. So you can target your advertising that way, or you can also just look towards paying for advertising and letting it kind of bring in both new and returning customers. But I encourage you, if you are focusing on first time customers, they also try to get some earned customers in there as well. And earned customers would be from, let's say they come in organically from, you know, they t find your website and they, or through word of mouth or through social media. So there's multiple different ways that you can get earned customers, both in a first time basis or in a repeat basis, you know, that could be through your email marketing or through your other sales channels and other referral word of mouth mechanisms that you might have on your website, or just the sheer nature of people coming back over and over again because of the nature of your product that you have is, we talked a bit about yesterday, something that's consumable that people can come back and buy over and over and over again. So in each of those scenarios, there is what we would call a cost per acquisition involved if you are paying for any of that activity. So what we've looked at here is the $300 yesterday that we sold in our previous version of the customer margin tree is $300 on the new customer side of the equation or first time customer side of the equation. On the repeat side of the equation, it's, it's a little bit lower and it's most likely because you've already paid once to get them in the door. You're probably not gonna have to pay to spend over and over and over again. So in this scenario, what we're looking at is, is we've looked at the total acquisition costs as well at the very bottom here. And how the math works is if we take our 10,000 customers, split it between first time and repeat, that gives us 4,000 customers here. That 4,000 customers splits further into earned versus paid at 3,000. And so 3,000 customers times a $300 cost per acquisition would be $900,000. But you're wondering, maybe where does the under 100,000 come from? Well, it comes from the other side of the equation. So if we took our 10,000, split it out to the 6,000 repeats, out of those repeats, 1,000 of them were paid. And those 1,000 times $100 would give us another $100,000 to add to our total. So that's where we come up with the $900,000 plus the $100,000 to give us a million dollars in cost for acquisition. Now, if you recall, we looked at this and the overall sales revenue in this customer margin tree was at 10 million, acquisition costs at a million. So that was roughly about 10% of spend to total revenue. And that's a typical benchmark that most e-commerce merchants would be using or brands would be using. You know, a lot of people ask me all the time, 
Blair, what's the right budget I should have or the right amount I should be spending on advertising? And I always typically say, well, how much can you spend is my first question. Um, but, you know, seriously, in all seriousness, though, typically about 10% of revenue is a good healthy benchmark to start with. You may find that's you, you can spend more than that. You may find you may be able to not be able to spend quite as much as that, but 10% is kind of the benchmark that I've seen. And so in this scenario, that's kind of been a healthy benchmark we're gonna use as we work through the different scenarios. So let's take a look now, if you were just starting out at the, at, as a customer or a merchant, sorry, and you just didn't have any customers at all. So if we looked at our scenario on the left-hand side as sort of our base case, and we look now to, let's say you had 10,000 customers you're trying to acquire and they were all first-time customers, Let's hold constant the fact that they were split still sort of 75, 25 between earned and paid. So those 10,000 customers at 7,500 of them being paid and $300 per acquisition is gonna yield you quite a bit more in acquisition costs at sort of 2.25 million or roughly 125% more, two and, a, two and a quarter times more when you're just starting out. So you're, what it's just showcasing here is the fact that if you have no repeat customers, you're gonna to have to spend a lot more and work a lot harder to get those first time customers in the door before they can become repeat customers for you. So it's, the, does math follow? Does it make sense? I hope it does. And so let's take a look at now, if you're just starting out, but now let's look at if you're still growing, where maybe you're in a growth phase where you have more first time customers than repeat customers. Again, so what we're doing is we're just taking the 4,000 and 6,000 and inversing that. So let's say we had 6,000 first time customers versus 4,000 repeats. That still breaks down in sort of the 75-25 split between earned and paid. And so it's 4,500 and 300, still is gonna yield you quite a bit more in acquisition costs. So it's still gonna yield you more. And then if we took 4,000 here, we hold the constant at 1,000 paid and $100. So you've got 100,000 in your repeat customers you're spending on, but then you've got another 1.35 million, or basically 45% if you look at that total, more to your spending and acquisition costs than if you were just at this sort of growing phase where you had more repeats. So let's see how the scaling works a little bit further. If we take a look at now a more mature business that is scaling faster and faster and faster with more repeat customers. So if we take our base case scenario, 4,000 and 6,000, but let's push that needle a little bit further, even over more, where we're still holding 10,000 customers constant, but now we've got 3,000 first-time customers and 7,000 repeat customers, what you're gonna find is, is that if we keep that same sort of 75-25 split, we're gonna start now seeing our cost per acquisition start decreasing, or we're gonna see our overall acquisition costs coming down because you're seeing that 2250 times 300 is a lot less than 3000 times 300. And so we keep, even if we were still paying at $1,000 for some of our repeat customers, we're gonna find that 675 is what we get off this side of the equation and 100,000 is what we get off of this side of the equation. So we're gonna see a reduction of about 23% on our overall acquisition costs. So definitely starting to get more savings in the scenario where the more and more repeat customers, the more and more you're better off in terms of you're gonna save more on your acquisition and your spending for advertising. So that was hopefully a bit of a blur, but it was hopefully a, a good blur <laughs> and or uh, a good, uh, good understanding of what sort of these acquisition costs look like and uh, shows you some few, few scenarios where if you are spending money on advertising, what you need to do is focus on, the, the, the moral of the story is focusing on getting more repeat customers into your business. Because those repeat customers, you're gonna have to spend less to get them in the first place. And you're also gonna be spending less overall to bring them in the door. So with that, that's kind of today's lesson today. We're gonna dig a little bit further into some of the paid versus earned customers and how maybe you'd be able to skew even more towards more earned customers versus paid We'll look at some different scenarios of traffic and how traffic comes into your site again. So we'll kind of touch on a little bit of that conversion margin tree that we spoke about a couple of days ago and last week. But for, with that, I'm gonna leave you with the lessons for today. I really thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. And again, as always, I ask you to be present, connect with others and go make an impact in someone's life today. So thanks for watching and I'm gonna pause the recording now and take any questions from anyone.